Okay, so in the last video, I introduced the uh, ordered field axioms. So there's the field axioms, the ordering axioms, and then the sort of special axioms that combine them. All together, you can refer to all of those things as the ordered field axioms, right? And so there are basically two theorems in this section in the book, which basically prove some familiar properties of um, the real numbers or the rational numbers uh, directly from those axioms, right? And uh, I want to emphasize that the part of the purpose of this is to teach you that in general it's bad to take things for granted even if they seem obvious. It's good to get in the habit of sort of mentally justifying why everything is true and uh, this hopefully will be a good exercise for you in thinking very carefully about how the seemingly f obvious familiar properties of these operations and everything really follow from the axioms that we listed down. Okay, so let's start, let's just go through some of the proofs. I'm only gonna do a couple of them. Uh, so let's look at um, theorem 3.1, which is about field axioms. So part one of this is about cancellation of addition. So they just say um, A plus C equals B plus C implies A equals B. This is of course implicitly for all A, B, and C in R or Q or whatever. We haven't really defined R yet, but we'll, you know, I'll get there. We're not really going to define it fully, but uh, the axioms that we list will basically be everything we need to know about it. Um, so let's uh, look at the proof of this. So, um, Basically, if you look at the equation here, you know, to try to get from here to here, your gut instinct is to say, well, let's just subtract off C, right? The problem is you can't exactly do that. I mean, the axioms we listed down don't even really define subtraction. But what you can do is you could add the, uh, the additive inverse of C to both sides, and then you have to be a little careful about how it goes. So, um, so if we suppose a plus C equals B plus C, then let's add negative C. So A plus C plus negative C equals B plus C plus negative C. Notice how I'm being very careful with the parentheses here. The, this, this is just saying, you know, the, we're not using an axiom to actually get to this point. You're always allowed to do the same operation to both sides of an equation. That's just sort of philosophically true. Um, but what you have to remember is that when you do an operation to one side of the equation, you have to treat that entire thing, that side of the equation, at least, you know, a priori before we've done all this stuff, proving all these things, you kind of have to treat that side of the equation as this like uh, atomic unit. You can't break it apart or anything like that, right? So it's really because we have the associative law, right? Um, so then uh, by A1, um, we can uh, reassociate the parentheses here. So we get um, A plus C plus negative C equals B plus C plus negative C, right? So then by, now we can cancel these things. So by A4, a plus zero equals B plus zero. And remember that um, actually, or sorry, um, so up here, we're also actually implicitly using A4 to, to define the symbol negative C, right? A4 actually tells us, sorry, this is just supposed to be a normal A. So A4 actually tells us that negative C exists and has this property, right? So, um, and so then using the additive identity property, so then uh, by A3, I believe, A equals B. So that's all we wanted to show, we're done. Um, now, just you know, take stock of what happened here. We started with the sort of assumption here and then we derived the conclusion and each step of the way, we only ever used like one axiom basically, right? So absolutely nothing was left to the imagination here. This is sort of the ultimate level of rigor that you could possibly ask for in a proof. It's just completely laid out. 
everything is justified in terms of the axioms, okay? Uh, so obviously that is not the standard of proof that I'm asking for on the homeworks or anything, you know, this is a question that comes up a lot and I'll be happy to address it on Piazza or in the discussion sections. I don't want to waste too much time on it here, but basically when it comes to your work, um, you should just try to ask yourself the question like, does it seem obvious to me if you try to use like, if you're trying to make a leap of logic from one state to another and you're not sure whether you need to justify it, just ask yourself, well, does it seem obvious how it should be justified? And like, also, I guess, ask yourself, am I skipping a large fraction of the proof by doing this? So, but anyway, I'll talk more about that in other places. So let's just do one more of these. Uh, I'm gonna erase, uh, I wish I knew how to erase, erase better. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna erase this proof here. So we're gonna say we've proved that. Uh, now let's look at the next one. So this one is about um, multiplying by zero. So it's saying uh, a times zero equals zero for all a, you know, in R or whatever. Uh, and again, it's one of those things that seems obvious, but actually it takes a little bit of work to justify. So um, here's the proof of that one. So by uh, the additive identity axiom, a times zero equals a times zero plus zero, right? Zero plus zero equals zero, that's by the additive identity axiom. Uh, so now using the distributive law, uh, I'll just continue this equation here and kind of like put the justifications on this side. It's sort of a common way of formatting these things. So I'll have a times zero plus a times zero, right? Um, so actually, let me kind of, this looks confusing. Normally, you know, like I'm asking for you guys. Um, so this comes from that by the distributive law. So normally, like on homeworks and stuff, I'm asking for you guys to really try to use complete sentences to explain your argument, okay? This is, I'm doing this type of formatting like for lecture purposes because it's more efficient, right? But please, please try to make everything you say on homeworks be phrased in terms of complete sentences, okay? It sounds silly, but it's actually really important in helping you think about math, not just helping you like express your ideas. It actually helps you think better about math if you learn how to do that, okay? So, okay, uh, then uh, now that we have that, um, then, right, you can add zero uh, to the left side. So, so we can say zero plus a times zero, right? Because that equals a times zero just by, um, so I'm not, I don't have to do anything to this side because I know that a times zero equals zero plus a times zero by um, a3. So this is by a3 again. And then, um, and then uh, I can cancel, right, the, the right term from both sides. So zero equals a times zero. That's by the previous part which we already proved, okay? So you can kind of like, once you prove something, then you can use that in the future. And that way your proofs can get more and more complicated because you'll already have done a lot of complicated stuff kind of behind the scenes, okay? So, um, that's, uh, so that's a proof with uh, the field axioms. Um, now I wanna do a similar thing for some of the ordering axioms, um, but I'm actually gonna make another video for that one, so.